Welcome to Geeks of the North, a hobby and gaming podcast of Adult Pavanes. We're here to paint some miniatures and talk about the hobby, so why don't you sit back, relax, grab a paintbrush, and enjoy the show. Hey everyone, welcome to Geeks of the North, your hobby and gaming podcast of Adult Pavanes. As always, I'm your host, Paul Filio, here once again with uh, the main man, Antoine Bergeron. <laughs> I'm not the main man, you are the main man, Paul Filio. No, 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 you, you're, you're the... Uh, the uh, oil that keeps the machine running. I'm the right end man, maybe. You're my sword of vengeance. <laughs> it's better than the sword of Damocles. Uh, for, yes. <laughs> yes. This, this is true. Though if I could be a sword, I would choose to be a Damascus sword, because they are pretty. <laughs> and that wraps it up, folks. See you next week. <laughs> and our topic this week, what type of sword would you like to be? Yeah, yeah. So how's it going? What uh, what's new in the world of Antoine? Ah, cleaning, cleaning, cleaning. We're getting the keys to our new house tomorrow. Oh, congratulations! Yeah, so I'm sorting like most of the house. Like we've we've packed a lot of stuff. Uh, I I'm needing smaller boxes for my my books because the boxes I have are too big and weigh a ton to carry them. So, so funny story about books, and I'm just going to throw this in there while it makes sense. So, uh, you know, uh, Julian, right? You've, you, he's yes. in our, our campaign. Uh, one time he moved and he got boxes from school because he's a teacher or he's a librarian, actually. And the school had a bunch of boxes. There were boxes for 17 inch CRTs, like the old school monitors. Mm-hmm. And uh, he filled them with books and CDs. Uh, to move with, and uh, let me just say that you need some ro- some robust friends to carry those boxes. <laughs> I'll also mention that Julian's uh, group of friends mostly consists of women, because that's just Julian. So uh, yeah, I was uh, I was a convenient pack mule that day. Yeah, yeah, I- I've moved my library twice now, and. Uh... I know the weight of those boxes, and I've made one or two of the bigger ones. We got boxes from Mary's job and from uh, stores all around, but I remember that last time we bought specific boxes for that, like, especially for the like the European uh, comics and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. To not break them and not pile them too big because they're super weighty. So I need to. Pick a pack of those at uh, Staples or something like that. Uh, Balm de uh, right? The, yeah. Uh, like the campaigns and stuff? Yeah. Uh, coming graphic novels? Kind of, yeah. yeah. But yeah. unlike North American graphic novels, they're hardcover and stuff, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Like, you say graphic novels here, people just think of thick comic books most of the time. Mm-hmm. Like compilations or just one big yeah. story instead of being comics, yeah. Well, I should say English people here. French people will probably we might think of the Tintins and the stuff. But English people here won't necessarily think of that. But yeah, all to say, uh, don't pack those in big boxes because mm. you will make no friends. No, no, I know. <laughs> and my 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 library is not that small. It's not that big, but it's not that small either. So I know how many boxes that is. Yeah. We got rid of a lot of books in the cleaning in the past few months, but we still have a lot. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, most of that is done. Right now, I am at my hobby room, and I need to uh, sort and pack that. And I need Good to luck, do a lot friend. of cleaning because I won't have as much space for for the hobby in the next place. And I have a lot of crap. <laughs> I, I don't know what that's like, Antoine, so... Uh, yeah, I know you know. <laughs> I, I can't sympathize. <laughs> but yeah, I've I've been sorting even just my pile, like the, the shelves of miniatures, like like the unopened box. And, oh, okay, that that might be able to go. So I'm like, I have boxes for stuff I, I know I'll keep, but I'm starting to do boxes for stuff that I will move, but will have a for sale tag on it. And see if I can get rid of some of it after. Yeah. Because I, I don't have the time now. Like, we're moving in two weeks and a half. So I don't have the time to deal with 
posting the online online and meeting people or just yeah, yeah. mailing it. So time for that is done. Yep, it's too late. So I'll just pack it, but at least they'll be split already. I understand. Yeah. So that's what's new. <laughs> what's new on your side? Uh, nothing. I uh, I'm sure you can hear this on the mic, and I'm sorry. I'm fiddling with resin buildings from Tabletop World. I'm finally getting around to painting them. And I'm just doing a bunch of uh, dry brushing and a little bit of detailing. I mean, they're they're gorgeous. And um, I think they're very reasonably priced for what they are. But there's just a lot of detail. Uh, which is a blessing and a curse all at the same time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they are really, really nice. I uh, I don't regret buying them whatsoever, but like I said, it's uh, it can be a lot of work, and yeah, it's a lot of you know you can dry brush the the stone and stuff, and that, and that's fine, that's all fine and dandy. Um, the problem is when it comes time to do uh, everything else around the stone, um, you can no longer really dry brush so much, or you have to be much more careful. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm thinking of maybe getting some after the move. Like before most of our terrain was the goal of it was to be sturdy, easy to move and cheap because we were using it for the club. Yeah, but that's not really the case anymore, right? Eh? But it's not the case anymore, so I could I can start to plan like terrain just for me that I'll keep. And as I play mostly fantasy team games I could uh, manage to get some of those terrain, make nicer table. They would fit in a lot of the the games I, I'm wanting to play. So well, that's just it. That's that's why I'm working out now because um, I've been talking with my buddy Alex, and he uh, he's been a fan of Frostgrave for you know, a couple of years now, and we keep talking about it, threatening that someday we're going to play this game. Um, but with my recent um, uh, enjoyment of Rangers of uh, Shadowdeep, mm-hmm. uh, I kind of want to play uh, an adventure style game with like a campaign and stuff, and that's Frostgrave, right? Yeah. And it would give me something to do with Alex, and he, he lives next door, so it's convenient to, uh, you know, <laughs> hey, we got nothing to do tonight. You want to play a game of Frostgrave? Sure. And he's got place, so... He lives alone, so he has a big empty house and no one to justify anything to. Well, not a big empty house. He's got a, a smallish empty house. But still. <laughs> yeah. He's got no wife uh, or kids to contend with. Because apparently those people need living space too, right? So, or so yeah. I'm told. Yeah. So, yeah. Just doing some, some dry brushing and getting some stuff done. And I keep... Finding stuff that would fit. So I have, um, like four of the tabletop world, uh, buildings. And I have a big inn that was done by. Oh, Games in Gear, the one you bought at Gen Con. The yeah, the Games in Gears, yeah, that I got for a song, right? Because they, they yeah. didn't want to have to take them back. Yeah, you bought that um, on the last day. Yeah, yeah, I, I kept, I, I went back on the last day. And that. If I, I remember think, correctly, packing it was a challenge. Um, yeah, it was quite large, but I mean, I, I think originally it was over a hundred dollars us. And I think in the end I paid $40 us for it or something. Mm-hmm. So for a big resin in, but then I also found, um, the garden of more from games workshop, the plastic terrain. Yeah. I have one of those in a box here, brand new. So that's convenient. <coughs> Pardon me. I'm getting over a cold. And I also found out, uh, or found, that I picked up a couple of years back, probably for Warhammer Fantasy, um, from Warlord Games. They have something called, like, the Ruined Hamlet or something. Okay. And it's a plastic set of three European farmhouses. Oh. Like stone farmhouses. And they say farmhouses, but they're, like, two stories tall. They're, they're, they're about the same size as the, um, and they're 28 mils, so they're about the same size as the uh, Tabletop World stuff. And in a similar enough style that uh, they would fit in. 
And since they're ruins, like, there is no roofs and stuff to really have to worry about them not matching exactly. Yeah. So, it works out well. So I should have enough for a pretty, a pretty nifty frost grave table. Yeah, and some of the scenarios for rangers might be more urban. I've not looked at the whole list yet. So. Well, I, I think, I think in the original set, uh, there's just the first one. Yeah, in their uh, original book, yes. But after that, there is a bunch of uh, expansion books. So. Yeah, I haven't really looked either. But man, that game is cool. Yeah, we need to continue our adventures. Yes. Our fun little chibi ranger murder adventures. The only thing getting murdered is my, uh, my war dog, apparently, over and over <laughs> again. Every mission. Yeah. It's all because he lulled me in that false sense of, like, ability. <coughs> yeah, he completely destroyed the first thing he attacked. Then yeah, yeah. He, he obliterated it, and I was like, yeah, this guy rocks. And then he proceeded to die nonstop doing everything else. I was lied to, my friend. Lied to. That's okay. Yeah. Uh, after the move, I'll start uh, working on the terrain for the first gathering terrain and miniatures for the next set of missions. Yeah, I am. Um, I'm actually going to be buying some miniatures, I think, soon. I've been looking... It's funny how tastes change. So, years ago, when North Star military figures started making Frostgrave figures, I looked at them and I was like, eh, don't really want to spend money on those. They're not very nice. I looked at them this week and I was like, wow, these things are super interesting. <laughs> Like, they're all full of character, and, like, they look really neat. So I don't know if they changed the models on me when I wasn't looking, or just my tastes have changed so much. I think you... Uh, I I have similar view of it. I think I just got tired of the too many details on War Machine models. Oh, there's a lot of details in these guys, too. Yeah, but... I mean, it's not, not Guild Ball scraps everywhere. Yeah, that's, I think that's like Guild Ball and War Machine have killed my fun of painting thousand straps and belt buckles and. Yeah. I mean, especially if you think about how many Guild Ball teams I've painted. Mm hmm. Like, that's a lot of straps. Yeah. Far more than I care to think about right now. Um, and, and they're, they're nice because the, you know, all the, all the details are, are interesting, but after 15 figures, it gets kind of the The, the good thing about the Frostgrave figures is because it's a multi-part plastic kit, you know, you can kind of do lots of interesting things with the model, and, uh, you know, they have lots of details, everyone can be painted different, they're all mercenaries, so there's no, you're not constrained, right? There's no, uh, as it's a team, so I gotta make it kind of uniform. Mm -hmm. There's, there's none of that. And, and that's a nice, that's a nice change too. Because while, um, Guild Ball's a low model count, you're still trying to keep some sort of semblance of a, this is a team, so they, they have to fit with each other. And that's really not the, the case with Frostgrave, so. <coughs> Who does my cold is getting the better of me? So yeah, that's, uh, I'm looking forward to it. I, I was really surprised actually, and I looked at the, um, the soldier's box, and they have a, a soldier's two box, which I found out was actually just female sculpts, which I think is pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, that's um, yeah, so I, I'm really looking forward to, to picking those up and picking up the wizard box and making some kind of, because they're kind of, they make me think of Warhammer fantasy models, like the Empire stuff, but with a, a more cartoony feel in a sense like some of the some of the models are definitely more uh, cartoony looking than, than what we see in Warhammer uh, fantasy days <coughs> hopefully it's not coming through too loudly on the mic um yeah so looking forward to that and assembling those guys and seeing what they what they look like when they're done but yeah, I, I promised myself I'd get all my terrain done before then, because I find that having a nice-looking table is a good motivator for getting the models painted to play on it. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, after having painted my rabbit burrow, I kind of just want to paint more of my uh, burrows and badger, uh, burrows and badger miniatures. I still think that thing looked really cool. I know you didn't uh, you didn't make it to the next round, um, but I'm sure the competition was super stiff at that point. Yep, but, it was. And I think your, I I think your piece of terrain did not have mass appeal. Right, the the game style is kind of kind of unique. I don't think it's mass market, and I think that uh, that hurts it from a voting perspective. Uh yeah, but the other piece was not a, a game piece. It was just a it was a display piece, not yeah. game related. It was more of a kind of historic call, historic farm, something you would have seen in either medieval time or. Uh, not medieval time, just like current rundown farm. Okay. So, but it was nicely done. Pretty had more uh, small details. So you didn't have a giant rabbit trying to stand guard. No, but it had a small chicken laying in an old tire. Well, yeah, but chickens are cool. Yeah. Nice you know, unless, details. Unless you're a weirdo like Yom. Uh, bunny rabbit people are not your thing. Just saying. You you heard it here, folks. You old Miss Strange. Uh, I had uh, a bunny connection when I was younger, so... Yeah, but then you grew out of it. <laughs> Just saying. Sure. <laughs> you know, I hear um that uh, bunny rabbits' uh, imagery are tied to a bunch of mental conditions. <laughs> Megalomania, Egomania, Wrestlemania, all the big ones. Uh, that last one I would not have applied to Yom. But you don't know what he does when he's not around. No, for sure. <laughs> Maybe he, uh, no, I'm not even going to go there. <laughs> there was, there was going to be a, a joke about Rox dressing up in a singlet and him body slamming her, but I, I won't, I won't go there. <laughs> I guess I did kind of go there, but yeah, you were not going there. Then just said it. Yeah, yeah. With less innuendo than I would have said it otherwise. Okay. <laughs> what you gonna do, brother? Yeah. When Yom runs wild on you. Yeah. So, what else have you worked on this week? I uh, I painted some uh, some street lines on my city uh, city of heroes on my pulp city bases. So I have like you know the white lines next to the sidewalk and the the center lines on the street. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I, I I worked hard this week. Let me tell you. You know the thing about uh, working like a maniac is that you don't have a lot of energy for hobby at the end. No. No, and uh, I want to take that up with my boss. My job is negatively impacting my hobby career. <laughs> I'm going to start a new uh, hashtag, uh, just say no to work. Sure. You'll be hungry, you'll be unemployed, and you'll have no miniatures to paint. But don't let the man get you down. Well, you probably have enough minis to last you for a while, even without buying new stuff. That's, that's well, we can put that to the test. Um, yes, this is true. But but think of those poor souls who don't have a lifetime supply. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I tell you, if I'm if I'm even close to as amusing as I think I am, I can make money off this. Well, after five years, I think we would have known if it was the case. Well, if I was funny, or if we can make money off it, because uh, well, I, I think both. I think we know that uh, we <laughs> can't make money off it, and I think uh, you know I think I'm funny, but I might be just as delusional as Yom is. Yeah. You might be funny, you might not be funny, like money-making funny. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think what I need to do, though, is do a, a podcast with, uh, you know, I need someone with less personality than you. Oh, because so, I have so much personality. Yeah, it's just, I need someone to make me look even better. So I need someone that's super dry and uh, really monotone. Um, okay. Wait a minute. I think I know someone like that. Antoine's being nice. Yeah, we probably know many people like that. Yeah. <coughs> All right. 
Inside jokes notwithstanding. Uh, yeah, so that, I haven't done much. It's sad. I haven't even played games. Like, this real life stuff sucks. I don't want to be an adult anymore. Yeah, it's, well, it's not everything they promised me. I want out. <laughs> You're having it rough this week. Like, doing even more work than you usually do. New schedule for the kids. It's not helping. No, this is true. This is true. Yeah, and we were supposed to have a game, but it fell out. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, I decided to get sick. Thanks, kids. Appreciate it. And uh, then we were going to do a hobby hangout thing, and we fell asleep because we're old. <coughs> wow, apparently my cold is uh, not liking me podcasting. Yeah, you're not over it. Well, I thought it was. Maybe it's coming back for an encore. Stupid colds. Yep. Yeah, it's uh, you know, it's really depressing, like, the fact that I can't get a game in now. Like, I need my schedule to to improve. I mean, poor Steve just thinks I don't like him anymore. I haven't seen Steve in, like, two months, I think. He doesn't even invite me to events anymore. He just drives to Ottawa with his new guild ball friends, goes and plays with them. I find out about the event after he wins it. <laughs> I'm not bitter, though. Not bitter, not me. I'm above that. Don't you believe it? You you haven't played anything either, right? Just no, nope, I didn't play. I barely hobbied. I uh, I was working on veteran ox last week, and I mainly did his skin last week. And in the meantime, I've did most of the other base coats. So that's what well, I'm so working on right now. You've done your color blocking, basically. Yeah, a bit more than that. But yeah, most of the color blocking and started detailing some of the pins and the other other canvases. There's so much different type of textures on So many belts. Well, there are belts, but the butchers have, like, layered yeah. clothes. So I, I need to read... Really differentiate between all the layers but stick in that gray-brown scheme that I have for them. Oh, that's rough, too, because it's, it's not exactly a, a palette with a lot of contrast, necessarily, right? So not gotta... at all. The mines are really bland and beige, so it's not easy. Yeah. I can see that being challenging. That's me. That's really all I've done. I'll be wise. We've played some games with the kids, some board games with the kids, but nothing all new. Really? All stuff we already talked about in the past. What's the pirate one? Memoir. That's it. I love the name. I love it so much I can never remember it. <laughs> yeah, I suck at memory. Like, I must be getting old. I can't remember anything anymore. Yeah. For a guy that used to be known for, you know, known for his memory, uh, how the mighty have fallen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. but I, I think that's really it. I'd be wise. Past week wise. Yeah, sorry, one of the things uh, you said triggered something memory-wise. Um, you're talking about how the, the butchers have, are layered, right? Like mm -hmm. a lot of the... That's one of the positive comments I see about the North Star figures, is that the adventurers are all like just layered clothing. Because they don't really have armor. So it's just like layers upon layers of mis mismatched, like, jerkin and whatever. Mm -hmm. So people are talking about, you know, all the opportunities for painting, and you can paint it all mismatched style. Which is the one thing I hated about the Empire. Was was all, like, the garish colors from the Warhammer Fantasy stuff. And here they are suggesting I paint these guys like that. I'm like, hell no. <laughs> but then I'm looking at it, I'm like, what am I going to do? My normal 36 shades of brown? like. Could be pretty boring to look at. Yeah. I guess maybe I'll have to start thinking about the garishly mismatched uh, bonums. <laughs> so you win this round, North Star military figures. Yeah. I, I mix my browns with grays. It helps. Yeah. I have grays and beige, and usually a cold and a uh, oh, warm brown. That's usually enough to differentiate the layers. 
Yeah, I don't find your figures are, are bland at all, actually. Yeah, I, yeah, they're not bland, but they're not colorful. <laughs> but I'd also... Okay, I can't want, see them from space, but I mean... Yeah. Uh, One thing that helps is most of them have really bright airs. That's true. I and that. So they that, that do makes them pop. And they do show a lot of skin. And <laughs> I've put them... Well... In in Brisket's case, it's really uh, she's really showing the skin. Yeah, that figure is really bizarre. Oops, I was behind my mic. That figure is really bizarre. Yeah, but that I've made the skin. Brisket is also like very like pale, right? Like mm -hmm. your your contrast on your skin is like pushed to the max. Yeah, but it makes it helps contrast for the more boring colors on the rest of the models. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It makes a huge difference. So the the really pink and red skin and the bright airs contrast with the rest. Yeah, I think your, your butchers are gorgeous models. But this one, yeah. It, I, if I remember correctly, it always happened. When I'm at that stage where I'm just putting the color blocking the layers, I always find them boring and kind of ugly. So I'm at that stage with uh, Veteran Ox right now. Hopefully, I'll overcome it. Uh, but I think that's pretty normal. Color blocking is... I mean, you, you really got nothing going on there, right, for visual interest. Mm -hmm. Especially on small models. Right? Because at the color blocking stage, they're small, so... So there's not enough natural shadows and highlights to really make them visually interesting. So I think it's normal that you just kind of hate them at that stage. I think everyone probably does when they do stuff. Uh, probably. I mean, I, I know I certainly... Maybe hate's a strong word, but I know when I'm co doing my color blocking, I certainly don't find them particularly interesting to look at. No matter what series of models I'm working on. <laughs> you know. Maybe if I was... Uh, as enamored with myself as Yo, I'd find everything I did super interesting, and and you know, <laughs> I'm really like laying it into him, man. Eh? Like I'm, re I'm on Yo, like a fat kid on cake tonight. I know because I was I was a fat kid. <laughs> Actually, no, I wasn't. I was a tiny kid. I earned my fat in my my young adulthood, as we called it earlier with my uh, previous gaming club. That's experience. Oh, I like it. I'm not fat. I'm a level 20 gelatinous cube. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here for first, folks. Aiming uh, for ogre. <laughs> what's that? What's that war machine model? The scorn guy is being carried around. Oh, uh, the minar, something. Sure. Yeah, him. It's not Zadish. Uh, doesn't it start with a J? Yeah, that stuck in my head. Anyway, you know who I'm talking about. Yep. The Dominar fat guy. If you almost here, you can tell us he plays that. Rashet. Rashev? Rashet. Oh, Rashet? I thought it was Rashev. No, that sounds too... Uh, uh, you, nah, the Russian faction. Uh, Kador? Yeah, Kador. With the V at the end? Well, I guess. Linguistics 101 on Geeks of the North here, folks. <laughs> so what were we going to talk about in the semblance of having an actual topic? Well, one thing we wanted to mention is the ongoing poll for oh, yes. our game showcase next year. So for our first pick for the game showcase. So we... We got some answers, more than we originally planned, we thought we might get in our worst estimates. Yeah, that's, and that's sad considering, we, you know, we don't have 8 million answers, you know, not 8 million people responded to the poll. Um, so the fact that we're excited about the few people that did respond to the poll means, uh, you know, we had pretty low expectations. Yeah. We're up to 17 answers right now, and strangely, Pulp City is in the lead. And with the, a pretty good lead. Considering how much we've talked about that game in the past, like, I thought people would add enough <laughs> of it. 
and want it to hear something else? Hey, if they want it, we'll give it to them. Mm -hmm. But we've talked about like doing battle reports and stuff like that for Pop City and never did it. So maybe people just want that part that we never did for it. Could be. Could be. But the the poll is still going. So you you can go in second place. Uh, Tide are Deep Wars and Judgment. Ooh, I like both those too. And after that comes Burrows and Badgers. And then there's a mostly tie for all the rest. No, I think if that's you have cool. not, yeah. If people have not answered yet, uh, the, we'll have it in the show notes and it's on the Facebook and on Twitter yet. You just have to look into the couple more recent posts and you'll see the, the link. And it's fun because that's like the biggest interaction we've had with listener in a while. <laughs> just having those answers on the poll. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not all. Some people are commenting too, so which is cool. We add suggestions of a game to add to the list. They're not added to this short list for the first pick, but we're adding them to the longer list to take a look at later. Yeah, let's get to his first list, see how we pull it off, and then... Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> I would go with that first try, not even that first list. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's kind of what I meant. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> like, I mean, we'll, we'll do we've something. We've not been able to game in almost a month, so... <laughs> Recording a battle report on top of that would not be possible right now. So hopefully it Well, yeah, but you better. won't be moving every month, right? So Yeah. And my schedule ease up a bit, too. Yeah, hopefully next year, uh, come January, it's going to be easier. And we're able to do that. And for Pope City, like doing a battle report will be easy because we know the game. It's not like we'll we'll have to learn and play multiple games just to get the hang of it before recording something that makes sense. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You actually want to know the rules before we record stuff? Well, probably have at least a dry run <laughs> before recording the, for the the battle report. Well, like, we're, we're, we just are really going outside the norm here for the industry. Yeah. At least knowing a bit of the rules. But with Pop City, we know them. Yeah. <laughs> We've played it. Uh, that's what I think I've played the most this year. So. I really like that game. I think it's truly underappreciated. Yep, me too. That's funny. I saw someone posting about uh, Marvel Crisis Protocol. Right? Mm -hmm. And they commented, uh, you know, finally a good superheroes game. And if I could have jumped through the internet at them, I would have. Yeah. <laughs> like, there has been a good internet, a good miniatures game, like, for superheroes for years. No one knew. Mm hmm And there's a, a, like, generic one, too, that's supposed to be really good, too. Yeah, the one where you can make your own superheroes and stuff? Yep. Super Mission Force, I think. Something like that. Something like that, yeah, yeah. And I keep reading good thing about it. So if there's you're so many, oops, go ahead. Yeah, if your problem is just that you don't like to have non DC or non Marvel superheroes, then that game is good because you could just make make your profiles with those miniatures and yep. have a go yeah. at it. You can buy your Night Models Batman figure, use it in that game. Mm -hmm. Make a, a Batman style guy. So th there are options, but there's also a lot of people who don't follow indie, more indie games, and really stay... Well, it's tough, right? Toward let's, the, let's be honest. The big ones. You know, indie games are not supported by a, a local gaming store. Yeah. And and I understand why, right? Stores need to make money. They're going to focus on what they know that can make money because they have limited resources. Limited money, limited staff, limited time. It's like everyone else. So I get it. But the local gaming store is where most people hear about games, right? Or the GW store. The GW store isn't telling you about anyone else's games. So. No. And I don't blame them either. That's one thing I I dislike from the norm, uh, North American gaming, Like, I, uh, is that we mostly play in stores and not in clubs. Like, when I hear about 
European clubs. There's always a larger variety because they're not linked to a store and you hear about people playing a ton of different games. Or it's, it might just be because that's the people I follow, but like there seems to be more variety there. I think it's also because in Europe, wargaming is more mature. And I don't mean in the sense that you know players are more uh, adult-like when they play it. I mean, you know, wargaming has been around a lot longer in Europe. Mm-hmm. It's still a, a relatively juvenile hobby here. Um, like, I don't know if wargaming really existed before Warhammer here, in any real large sense. No, probably not. Um, whereas in Europe, there was there's always been war games of one type or another, right? Yeah. But not being linked to a store and thus not having to have a game that's profited and Possible, s- yeah. selling makes for the possibility to have other games showed easier. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Like I said, I don't blame stores for... for oh, not, no, no. You know, it's there's only so much you can diversify, right? And, and maintain we, a, a profit margin that makes sense. We are pretty luckily, uh, l- pretty uh, lucky lo- locally. Yes, we are. Both uh, the Zakeda and Labis, the the two bigger store we have for miniatures uh, near here, are really, really talking a lot of different games. And before that, we had. Um, I, I, I'm actually going to say this. I think. Uh, that happened because stores like Gamers Vault mm-hmm. um, show that you could stock all kinds of different stuff and sell a little bit of everything. Yeah, you know, because they, you know, they had all kinds of different miniatures. They were always trying new games there. Maybe they differentiated a little too much. <laughs> I think that was one of their bigger strengths. Yep, uh, absolutely. I'm tired of dry rushing buildings. <laughs> Make a pose and. Uh... Let's talk about something else. Yep. So, uh, we we were discussing before the show, um, about uh, Christmas wish listing for miniatures and the challenges therein. Right? Like, how do you asking people for miniatures is hard enough because people always look at you strange. <laughs> Especially when you're, like, in your 40s. Yep. You know, when you have kids and stuff, and you're asking for more toys than your kid is. It gets to be a little weird. Um, and in general, you never get what you ask for anyway. Um, because people don't know how to buy it, where to buy it, what you're even talking about. Um, or they've been burned in the past by buying you stuff, and you never got around to painting it. So they don't want to buy you more. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was keeping that for later. <laughs> I, I didn't give any details. I'm not yeah. in your segment. Yeah. Um, well, it might, you mentioned it. That that's my tip for if you want your uh, significant other to buy you miniatures, paint them. Don't let them sit uh, on the desk on the shelf unpainted while you work on other stuff. That that that. That means that you no longer get miniatures. Yeah. Yeah, I feel you, buddy. Yeah. I uh, I was telling Antoine that last year I asked for judgment figures um, for Christmas. And the first figures I painted after Christmas were those. Yeah. Yeah. While I have two really nice and two really big models... That I got from my wife, and they've been sitting in their box, or at least uh, assembled, but they've been sitting in their box for years because I switch projects too often, and they're big pieces, so they're more uh, challenging to work on. Well, time-consuming, right? Yeah. And, and they're, it, for, they're for games you're not really, you're so. not really playing right now, right? So. Yeah. So the focus isn't there. Yeah, but I was playing those games. <laughs> well, at least one of those games when I got it. But yeah, as I'm yeah. painting slow, I was not there yet in my painting. 
And since then, the interest has changed. So. Yeah. yeah. Like right now, I see no reason to paint that Mountain King at all. Just for the fun of it? I have so many models that I want to paint for fun and not that big. <laughs> and if I want to play War Machine right now, I'm playing my pigs. So, like, the the main use I see for it is if we were trying uh, Saga Age of Magic and I could use it as my monster. Are they really on bases that big in Saga Age of Magic? I don't think so, but I think the bases are... Do they really matter? Yeah, I don't think they matter that much. As long as they kind of follow uh, a logic scale between your troop types. Okay. So it would be a nice big piece for like a troll army in in that game. I was saying, because uh, it's a giant troll? Yeah. yeah, yeah. But for that game, it would fit. Yeah. I think the other thing is that if you want models for Christmas, you gotta make it easy. Yeah. You know, create gift registries. Like, I think GW's website has a gift registry, doesn't it? Yeah, they even have a contest running right now about it with the Red Gabos. I if you tweet, out of the loop. Yeah, if you tweet at, at uh, Game Workshop with the, your list in it and you make, you mention or you, you tag or hashtag the Red Gabo right now, you, there's a contest for it. It's not applicable to Quebec, but for we have uh, listeners well, uh, outside of the province, so... Of course it's not, because Quebec... Yep. As they say in Critical Role, because of stupid laws. Uh, yeah, stupid giveaway laws. <laughs> but oh. yeah, they, they have an online registry, and you can share it. There's also a bunch of uh, wargaming books that are available on Amazon, or even some miniatures so you can, for people who have Amazon wishlists. That's another place to uh, look at. And I'm sure some stores That's can true. do it too. Um, you can buy a lot of different um, miniatures and RPG books on Amazon. Yeah, and all the Osprey line is available on Amazon too. Yep. Yep. Uh, miniatures, uh, you have to be careful because, like for example, a lot of the Frostgrave stuff is literally four or five times the the manufacturer's price. Yeah, yeah. but the books are usually good price wise. Uh, yes, because they're being sold by Osprey as opposed mm. to like a, a third party. Mm. Yeah, that that is true. But I was really disappointed in that because I was trying to find the the North Star military figures somewhere here. Yeah, like at a, at a good price, and um, I didn't really succeed. It made me more than a little sad. See, so yeah, if anyone of our listeners knows a good place to buy those figures in Canada. Uh, I'm pretty sure the answer is to order online. Yeah, but from someplace other than North Star, I mean. Is there really a better place that, like, do they have restockers that do? I don't, I don't know. Yeah. And they're, and they're in the UK, right? So shipping from UK is not that bad for Canada. No, no, it's not bad. I think on two boxes of minis, it was seven pounds. Yeah, that's, that's not bad. Considering it's 40 minis. Mm hmm. I mean, and the pound's also fairly weak, comparatively. So, buying in U.S. dollars is makes it more expensive than buying in in pounds. But yeah, you never know with customs and stupidities. Sure. I was just looking for some place in Canada. I got nothing no. against the U.K. No, I I don't see. I don't remember seeing anybody like stocking it. No. Widely. I don't even think. Uh, they they may not even have distribution partners, right? They might have in the UK, like for stores and stuff like that, because they're local and easier to. Yeah, manage. they may have direct accounts. Yeah. Hmm. Who knows? That yeah. gives me an idea. Um, we need to talk more often, Antoine. <laughs> um, because you make my brain work apparently. But yeah, so all to say, make it easy. Um. What I did last year, because my, my wife didn't want to buy me figures like that I knew I was getting, right? Like, she wanted me to be surprised. So I told her I wanted Judgment stuff, and she's like, well, fine, well, how do I know which ones, to, you know? Because I was also placing an order for Judgment. 
at the same time. And I'm like, well, I don't want to order stuff you're going to get me. But uh, since I was planning on playing in an event, um, I needed to get the figures so I could paint them. Right? I had to have some some lead time in order to paint them all. So what we did is she gave me a list of figures she wasn't buying me. Um, and then it turned out her criteria was none of the ugly ones. <laughs> so um, she bought me, you know, two of the pretty elven women. Yeah, she didn't like the orcs or the the dwarves or any of the weird races. So basically, humans were off limits to me. So I placed my order for other stuff. Then, and then I got the uh, the two cool elf models, and uh, life was good. Yeah, you can also if you have a local store. I'm sure you can. Set up something with them, make a list there, and oh, point yeah. your uh, your wife there or other people you know. Uh, well, yeah. game workshops do it, but I'm sure your other uh, like uh, independent. Yeah, I'm sure your local gaming, store, gaming store, store would be willing to you know, go that little extra mile to make sure they're getting some money. Yeah, uh, most stores I know like to make money. That seems to be a pretty common uh, trait. Amongst retailers. Yeah. And there's always uh, the option of uh, ordering it yourself in their name and they wrap it and put it under the, the tree. So you know what you're getting, but you're... Uh, but that's, see, that's what we used to do. But yeah. that's a whole lot less fun. Yeah, for sure. Let's let's be honest. Um, another thing is that uh, my buddy Alex actually had this discussion at work with uh, one of his female co-workers. Her boyfriend is a, a hammerhead, as he calls it. And she was asking, like, she was upset because all her boyfriend ever wants is figurines for Christmas and birthdays and stuff. <laughs> and, you know, this poor girl couldn't f understand why he kept asking for these things. Like, you know, surely he must get bored of getting them. Um, oh. To which I believe Alex replied with a cackle. And people really don't understand our hobby, right? No. They, they they don't understand the gaming aspect. They don't understand the artistic aspect, for the most part. Um, I mean, maybe they would if you're Ben Comets or something. You know, and your your spouse probably understands that you're an artist at that point because your models uh, look like pieces of art. Or you know, Yom's uh, display stuff or Antoine's display stuff. Like at that point, that's not just a, a gaming model, right? That's that's something extra. But that's not where most of us paint to. Um, so I, I think it it makes it harder for them to understand because they don't see it really as art. They see it as little toy soldiers. Um, which is a shame, I think. I think it's still a very misunderstood hobby, you know? Especially in North America. Yeah, like we're saying, it's still, it's still new here, right? It doesn't have that mass exposure. Well, I mean, I'm talking about it like it's Ben and Jerry's in the UK, and that's that's not it either. But no. <laughs> Pro tip, guys: you should not be painting buildings, and then turning the paint to the other side of the building and holding it up against yourself, using yourself as a brace to paint the side that's dry with the wet side pressed up against your shirt, um, because you will end up with acrylic paint on your shirt. Pro tip: uh, I guess I will need a new sweatshirt. Um. Yep. yep. I blame Antoine for distracting me with his dastardly good looks. What? <laughs> yeah, you heard it here first, folks. So, my looks is distracting you, uh, audio? Uh, no, no, I've got a webcam. I'll get your cam up, buddy. Uh, you're painting. You're not looking at me. Uh, how do you know I don't have a monitor on the floor so I can stare at you? <laughs> I've gone to your place, but still. Have you ever been under my desk before? Yeah. Careful no. how you answer that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, family friendly. Hold on. Yeah. The other thing about uh, Christmas or uh, like gift shopping, there's if you want stuff for you, but there's also if you want to have stuff for your kid or if you want to welcome people into the hobby, there's a bunch of uh, great starter boxes to get. 
Most games have those two player starter or those intro bucks or those battle forces. Hold on, are you talking about selling it to your partner as if uh you want to get them into the game, so you want to get the two player starter from them for Christmas? Ah, uh, no, I was mostly like a uh, to I thought that introduce was pretty your kids into it. But I see a lot of people who play more of the uh, indie games together. Like I see uh, one of those that I see a lot is uh, Burrows and Badgers. I see a lot of uh, couples playing it together. That doesn't surprise me. Uh, no offense to female listeners, but I can see the aesthetic of that game uh, appealing to uh, a broad range of females, right? Because it's not a bunch of guys running around with giant guns shooting at each other. Mm-hmm. It's a bunch of cute animals trying to cut each other up with swords. Much more acceptable. <laughs> as long as you're not uh, from PETA. Well, we all know PETA aren't real people anyway. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah. I'm, I'm pretty Those sure games. they're robots sent from the future <laughs> to destroy the past. I, I think PETA's plan is they're evil robots from the future sent here to make us stop wearing furs. So we all freeze to death in winter, and then the robots can have the Earth. I, it's as good a theory as any, because I've read some of the stuff they've written, and they certainly don't seem like intelligent people, so I can only assume they're evil robots. <laughs> yeah, the uh, wanting the uh, space wolf to no longer wear fur. Uh, that wasn't them. Was was wasn't that like a? a that wasn't a real thing, was it? Yeah, it was. It was it's... pretty more of a stunt, but it was from them. Was it? I thought it was a. Uh... A lousy internet thing, you know. Maybe. I, I might have been had by the internet. But I, I'm telling you right now, I hope it's real, because that, that just makes everything more awesome. Because <laughs> uh, Layman Russ would tell those PETA people where to go. <laughs> There's no wolf on the... What's the planet already? Uh, <sighs> not Caliban, that was the... That's the Dark Angels. Yeah. Fenris. Yeah, there's no wolf on Fenris. No wolves on Fenris, that's right. I had a space wolf player just kept repeating that to me one day, like I cared and or knew what he was talking about. And he was all like, ha-ha, I'm in on a secret that you're not in on. And I'm like, ha-ha, <laughs> you're a giant loser. My God. And it's right up there with the guys that tell girls about their D&D characters to try to pick them up. You know, I got news for you, even girl gamers don't want to hear that crap. Well, if another guy gamer don't want No, no, but... You know, they they try it on non-gamer girls, right? And you're like, what are you doing? Um, but even gamer girls don't want to hear that, right? So I, I don't I don't know why, I don't know what possesses men to 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 talk about stuff like that to try to impress women. By all means, talk about your hobby. I think it's important that girls know that you're a gamer geek before you start a relationship with them, because otherwise it'll probably end poorly. But uh, yeah, but that is not how you're going to entice them to date you. In most cases, there's exceptions to every rule. I digress. <laughs> uh, Christmas. Yes. I think that's all the tips I, I had about that. Is there specific stuff on your uh, wish list this year? Oh, it's tough. Um, I think, I think I would like some more judgment figures because there's still some that, I mean, I haven't played the game in months or whatever. But I really love the figures, and I love painting them. And I want to get back to painting them. There's a couple that have come out that I, I really, really like. Like the uh, the female orc warrior, Sharn. Yeah. I think she's awesome looking. And uh, I think she's got some interesting rules. I don't think she's the best model of her class. That's the one with the tower shield. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she just looks like she'd be fun to paint. Uh, I'm sure Yom wouldn't like her. Uh, that's not a shot at Yom. Uh, that's a shot at the fact that this, uh, that's not a shot at all. Um, Yom is a big orc fan. He's he's a he's an orc at heart. Um, but I don't think her aesthetic would appeal to him from what I what I've seen of his aesthetic in terms of judgment figures. Um, yeah, I I really like her. Um, I'd like to get some of the monsters as well. Um, the sea witch monster Rusaja, I think looks really cool. You know, that's the only downside to that game, I think, is that you need to have two of every monster. Oh, because some of the maps have double monsters in them? Yeah, most of the maps have double monsters, I think. 
Oh, oh, it's probably just because we've only played on the three. Yeah, the the larger scale maps. Ones, right? yeah. yeah, and you can't play with two different monsters because the then then it really upsets balance. Okay. Well, because some monsters are harder to deal with than others, right? Mm-hmm. So, if one guy has an easier monster to farm, he's gonna have mo- you know his guys are gonna level faster. Uh, the die roll to see which side of the table you end up on becomes more important. Or however you determine that, I can't remember anymore. Um, yeah, so I, I want I want some of the monsters. Uh, what else? I I think I'd like some of the um, the Frostgrave figures. Maybe the box of female adventurers, so I can build some. And, and I think my wife would enjoy me uh, getting those and painting them because they look like female adventurers would. They're not wearing uh, chainmail bikinis and stuff. Yeah. And my wife um, is uh, a feminist, and, a, and, I, and I say that uh, in a very positive way. Um, so I think she'd just appreciate those models being feminine, yet, you know, wanting to survive in combat. Yeah, no, no uh, chain mail bikini there. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I think they're 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 nicely detailed. With a with a good variety of components, that's the thing that the the North Star figures have a bajillion components. Like the the kit makes twenty models, but it comes with forty heads. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. Like it's it's really really a good value, and all their kits are interchangeable. So like the males, the females, the cultist kits, the barbarian kits, uh, all the arms and bodies and heads are all the same scale and all interchangeable. And it's designed that way. So you can really make some cool custom warbands. So, that. Um, you know, I would ask for stuff like some more tabletop world scenery. I'd, I'd really like uh, their windmill. I've wanted it for years. But there's just nowhere in Canada to get it. And in the States, I think the uh, the only reseller is... Or their official reseller supplier is Broken Egg. Um, so maybe we'll see them at TempleCon. Captain Ken? Uh Yes, that. Um, were you there last time? They were there, but Adam didn't go, right? Because he used to go to TempleCon. Yeah. Um, And he used to bring the Tabletop World stuff. That's the first place I got it. But the con shrank pretty significantly, right? Yeah. Um, when it ceased being TempleCon and became Captain Con. And so I think last year he didn't go himself. He... Uh, he sent inventory and then paid someone to mana booth. Um, that being said, uh, maybe what I could do is buy stuff in advance and have him ship it with his supplies to to the con. Oh, for sure. Since uh, I, I do know him, and I mean, we're not uh, besties or anything, but I I had lunch with the man, talked about business and stuff and the industry, and I like to think he likes me at least you know enough to sh- you know, sell me stuff and make it easy for me to get it. <laughs> To be honest, I think he likes everyone that much, at least. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's a good businessman. But I think that's it. I, I can't think of anything else, like, off the top of my head. Already, it's a fairly r- robust list uh, of pricey stuff. And I think I'll do like I did last year. Well, I'll give my wife, like, a a list of just a bunch of stuff. And I'll point her in the right direction of where to buy it. And then just let her pick stuff. And then I just won't buy anything. Uh, yeah, from that from line. My- for myself for a little while, and uh, yeah. Especially since uh, Judgment Now ships uh, in the States for free. Oh, that's good. Well, they have a U.S. Um, warehouse now. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's uh, Discount Games doing it for them, or, or what the deal is, but... It makes it a lot easier than shipping from Australia. That is 100% true. And a lot of the new models are actually produced in the U.S. Um, like, I think Sharn... And Lord Fazil, their Death Knight or whatever, and someone else they're coming out with, are all manufactured in the U.S. They're all cast here. Oh. And they're made out of a different resin. They're made out of a more robust resin. Uh, I haven't seen it myself to see what the differences are. But it certainly sounds interesting. Because they're, uh, you know, the typical resin that the stuff is cast in is pretty fragile. Because it's traditional resin, and traditional resin is pretty fragile. Looking forward to trying that out. 
All right, have we flogged that dead horse? I think so. Okay. Don't forget to uh, get your Christmas orders in early with your your loved ones, folks, because Christmas isn't that far away, and shipping time is a thing. Yeah. Yeah, on the Christmas topic, like, it's not for me, but uh, it's on my short list. It's, uh, I'm getting the, uh, I'm looking forward to getting one of the Star Wars Legion core set to get my son into gaming. Well, Eve, he's already played some stuff with me and painted some of my models, but I made him pick, like, I showed him a bunch of starters to stuff I didn't have, and let him pick what he was the most interested in, and, uh, and explain the, like, basic gameplay of how were they, uh, like, uh, army games or skirmish games and stuff like that. And he picked the uh, Clone Wars set from uh, Star Wars Legion. So that will be under the, the tree this year. It looks like a pretty interesting set. I mean, when you mentioned it the other night, I was looking to see what's in there. Mm-hmm. So, I, uh, I'm i torn about the game. Yeah, I, I wanted to try it. Bef- I wanted to try it before buying. But with the, the sale and everything, I that was uh, problematic to find the time to get a demo of it. But, uh, hey... Worst case, it's only one box, and yeah, it's, it's, we'll have fun painting it, and it's together. It's not like I, I'm getting it to play tournaments or stuff like that. Next thing you know, Antoine's a super competitive uh, oh, yeah. Star Wars Legion player. <laughs> sure. <laughs> it's for my son, man. It's nothing to do with me. Yeah. Could happen. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember when was the last tournament I attended. Uh, Remonsal? Probably. Was that it, maybe? Yeah. That was, uh, what, uh, four five or five years, years, ago? years ago? Has there been a guild ball tournament or anything that you played in that? Never played, always ran. Wow. I played in one of our team's tournament at Kiss Oh, 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 wait, no, 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 no. Yes, you did, that's true. Uh, and that was in the last five years. But you also played in a Relic Knight uh, tournament event at Captain Con thing. Yeah, a, a one-game event. <laughs> wow, well, okay, fair enough. <laughs> it was supposed to be more than that, though. Uh, supposed to, sure. <laughs> and that was two years ago. So. And, and you signed up to it thinking it was more than that, so I'm going to say that counts. Sure, yeah. So Don't two, try- two years ago. Don't try to pass yourself off as a casual. I know the truth. <laughs> yeah, a, a tournament for a game that was in beta. Sure, that that's super competitive. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> no, no, let's get it right. For a dead game, where the second edition of it was in beta. Yeah, that's. Let's not. Uh, that's how competitive I am. Yeah, see, I'm on to you. <laughs> Others don't know you as well as I do, Antoine. Yeah. I've seen your dark side. Okay, I'm getting weird. Let's go to, uh, or weirder. Let's go to, um, our news items. Okay, I have a couple of those this week. So, first one is this Scott Pilgrim Miniatures the World. No, no, really? Yes. Yeah. They just relaunched. They, they did it earlier this year. It didn't really, uh, Get the interest they wanted. They've reworked the uh, the box, the content, uh, the pledge amount, and now it's going. It's a short Kickstarter. There's only by the time of release, there will be like a uh, less than a week left to go. But right now they are past their funding goal, uh, way past their funding goal, and doing well. The miniatures you have the choice. It's a board. It's a miniature board game, kind of a. Uh, fighting game between either the the good guys or uh, Scott and uh, the his band versus the exes, and you fight on s- music stages or stuff like that. There is a uh, terrain props you can have on the table, and it's a fighting game. Uh, the minis come prepainted. You have an option to have them uh, unpainted too, but you can then can have them painted also. So it's your choice. Uh, there's a base box that comes already with the full band. 
paddle with the tree. Yeah, tree. I don't remember the name. Not RPs, but uh, the uh, hipster chicks, demon expert chicks, and so there's a bunch of stuff already. Nine characters in the base game, and there's multiple expansions with the uh, further characters or alternate models. Like uh, Ramona, I think has f- four different models <laughs> available overall when you go through everything, all the expansions. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The base I, uh, game is... I never got a chance to read that, but I love the movie. Yeah, I have the books. Uh, I could uh, lend you the, the box set. Uh, I will probably take you up on that. Yeah. After you've moved. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because it's packed already, so... <laughs> I won't open those boxes. Uh, th- there's multiple pledge, and if you just want the minis and don't want a game, they even have a pledge for just the painted minis. So you could get the the uh, the nine core miniatures pre-painted for you and just get that for display purpose. Yeah, I mean, they know their target audience, right? Yeah, and after that, if you want to go to the game, there's two pledge levels. So at $60 US, you get the game with the unpainted miniatures, and at 80 you get it painted, which is not that big of a jump. So nope. that's pretty cool. And after that, there's uh, other sets, like for... It's not that costly. Like for 149 US, you get the court game and all five expansions. So you get everything unpainted for 150 That seems pretty like, in line with other uh, board game Kickstarters of this type. Yeah. yeah. So nothing wrong with the value there. Yeah. Uh, I'm always... I'm always wary of Kickstarters for these games, yeah. Because uh, you never know how they're going to play. Yeah, they they have but, uh, example of plays, and I think you can download some of the rules. And you haven't seen the the character cards on there with their power and how they're they're working. So yeah, no, there's a lot of lot of uh, good information on the Kickstarter. Um, but I mean, just just for the models, it's it's lousy, as my wife would say. Yeah, just just for the models, it's interesting. Like I have the the character edition, uh, the the movie. I have the book, so that one is really interesting to me right now. That's something you could ask to for a, a Christmas gift, get a, a Kickstarter pledge for you, and you might have it by next uh, next Christmas. <laughs> this one is supposed to ship in June of 2020, but we never know with Kickstarters. It's a reputable yeah. com- uh, company, though. It's not a, a first timer. It's Renegade Games. And they've done multiple Kickstarter, and they have released a, a bunch of games also outside gonna, of that. So I was going to ask if it was Jasco. No, <laughs> no, it's not Jasco. They they have a, a ongoing Kickstarter that they need to complete before doing more. I think. Did did they ever ship Mega Man? Uh, yes, it was shipped, but right now they have the uh, Street Fighter one still yeah. on, in work. I, I think. But yeah, I've seen Mega Man uh, in stores. So. Oh really? I haven't. Yeah. Uh, I didn't hear anything about it after the Kickstarter, so I never knew what happened. So, yeah, Scott Pilgrim Miniatures: The World. So it's available, and will the Kickstarter will f- end on Tuesday, November nineteenth? So you don't have that long to go. So don't wait too much if you're interested. The second one I want to mention, it's another Kickstarter. This one by Antimatter's Game. It's the Uncharted Realms of the Abyss. It's a bunch of 3D STL files, and you can also de- get them uh, pre-printed if you want, for models for Deep Wars and Shadow Sea, or for display or whatever. So it's a bunch of monsters, terrains, creatures that would fit their... Uh, their world, uh, dinosaurs, uh, sea creatures. You even get uh, access to some uh, color plates, like color PDF, to print uh, uh, maps and tiles for the games. A lot of interesting stuff. And all the uh, creatures will come with rules. So you will have a PDF of the rules for everything you get uh, available to print. I was going to say, if they expect you to print it using the game, it better come with rules. Yep. 
And there's a bunch of terrains too, miniatures, sea creatures, land creatures. And that, that's actually a good thing because one of the challenges of that game, right, is there's not a, there's not a lot of good terrain for for it. No, no, yeah. that's true. I mean, there's that one piece from GW that I can think of off the top of my head. Yeah, it's right next to me right now. Yeah, and then a bunch of aquarium terrain. You know. Yeah, and they have some terrain, but it can be quite costly doing the big resin pieces. Yeah, for sure. So the, I think it's a good way to go. Yeah, especially with the fact that 3D printers are getting more and more uh, widely like available, and seems like everyone I know now has a 3D printer. It used to be just me. That's everyone. Yeah. And I don't even have one anymore, so. Yeah, now it's all the people you know and yours don't work. <laughs> yeah. Well, someday I'll have the time and energy to fix that. Yeah. So, really cool looking stuff. Cool company. Uh, they've run Kickstarter in the past. So, this one is their first uh, 3D files Kickstarter. So, I think it just makes it easier because they already have all the renders. So, it's just going to be the the distribution part of it. And updating the rules for it, but I don't see any problems with it uh, being delivered. Uh, they are past their funding goals already. There will be about two weeks left to go when we release, so it will end on Saturday, November 30th. And that's it for the news this week. Well, fine. I will put down this piece of terrain I'm working on. It's, uh, it's, I was going to say it's a short and sweet episode, but but not really at all. Nope, it was not. <laughs> but we didn't ramble quite so much as we have in the past recently. No, we we, we had stuff to talk about, I think. Yeah. Which is good. Yeah, it's a nice change. Uh, all right, buddy. Well, as always, it's been a pleasure. Yes, it was. I'm going to uh, finish painting this uh, roof and then call it for the night, I think. So on that note, uh, thanks very much for listening, folks. And Antoine, I will see you next week. Bye, geeks. Thanks for listening to Geeks of the North. If you want to contact us, you can email us at geeksofthenorth at gmail.com. Like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash geeksofthenorth. Or follow us on Twitter at Geeks of the North. You can follow me, Paul, at PR Filio, Antoine at Eltonio Berg, Steve at B underscore Steve, and if you really feel the need, I guess you can follow Yom. He's at Yomasta. Breaks and outro music by Ladrav. You can listen to them at ladrav.bandcamp.com. See you next time, geeks. Thank you for checking out United Geeks Network Family Member. If you enjoyed it and are looking for other online media with a geek culture slant, head over to unitedgeeksnetwork.com where you will find Who, What, Why, a game design podcast. A podcast that talks about the ins and outs of game design with game designers. The United Geeks Network. You can broadcast your geekiness at unitedgeeksnetwork.com.